is Michelle Walsh, and I'm new at the league in two different capacities. Our lives crossed um, from two different programs. I am a social worker who is in hospice, and also I'm a volunteer at the Allen B. Pearson Cancer Center. I'm a yoga instructor. And I first met Melanie, and she was at the survivorship program. She participated there shortly before Charlie and Ethelene left for North Carolina. And the program offered an integrative approach to cancer care. I love that word, integrative approach to medical care. But that's something Ethelene advocated That was passionate to her heart. Um, you know, for many, many years before we started doing integrative care at the Cancer Center here in Lynchburg, there was no such thing. But Ethelene was a pioneer about what this was. She had these ideas before anyone else did in this area. I'm a firm believer of that. Um, she had so much knowledge of energy work, massage. Um, she was integrating that into her nursing career as a massage therapist for a long time before it was really recognized in our medical field here. Um, she studied approaches to healing, integrated techniques that not only were there for others, but also for her own self-care. So I feel really honored today to be here and to um, tell Charlie and her family how much I admire Ethelene her advocacy um, for this integrative approach to medical care. Um, so many patients and folks have benefited from this from her. As a nurse, as a massage therapist, and as a friend. So not only was Ethelene a determined advocate, she was a passionate teacher. Teacher is one of my favorite words for Ethelene. And not only did she have this passion for what she did, she taught others her passion. Um, she was doing this in the midst of her terminal diagnosis. I mean, months, months before she died, Ethelene had some of our hospice nurses and was training them in integrated care. That's just beautiful that she was still not stopping and working with nurses in her final weeks of life. Um, sharing her knowledge, passing along her holistic skills. Uh, the power of her teaching was her enthusiasm. And it was such a gift to receive her enthusiasm. And I want to share you a story. Um, after you know, working with Ethelene in the survivorship program, that was a short time. Charlie and Ethelene went to North Carolina. I didn't reconnect with her until she came into our hospice program. And that was um, you know, fairly recently. And I have a story to share that I think illustrates her love of teaching. So what Ethelene and I share in common is this passion for complementary therapies. And one day I made a hospice visit, a social work visit. And this was in the last month of her life. Um, she was in bed. She told me she'd been sleeping for 13 hours. She was lethargic. Um, she was anxious, she was sad, she was tearful. And we were discussing her health and her situation. So we decided that some guiding, um, guiding her in some breath work, maybe calming that day, maybe soothing for her. Um, and it went something like this. Notice the breath at the tip of your nostrils. Feel the cool air as it comes in. Each breath, breathe in what nourishes you. Breathe in inspiration. With each out breath, release what you don't need. With each exhalation, unwind, relax. So as that breath work progressed, Edwin's anxiety ceased. She stopped focusing on her illness and her worries. Her eyes brightened, beautifully brightened, as you know, that sparkle in her eye was there. 
She began sharing stories of her experience as a practitioner of integrative therapies. A natural teacher, she really engaged me in dialogue, um, sharing information on mind-body programs. Um, I started mentioning a program I would heard of but didn't know a lot about, wondering if she had knowledge of it, and she did. And I was like, how cool is this? <laughs> well, here I am, I'm learning from Ethelene, you know, it was really, really cool. Then suddenly she like sat, oh, she just pulled it up in bed. She'd been in bed for 13 hours. Susan the dog was like all startled, like what's going on here? Um, and before I could react, she was out of the bed, using her walker down the hall and opening the stairs to the basement. Charlie and I are like, no, that's my no, you know. My social work head is like, oh my gosh, this is unsafe. And we can't let her go down the stairs. She's halfway down the stairs. And um, I was like, where did this energy come from? It was just amazing. And even though she was giving me a heart attack, um, she was determined to go to that basement and lead me to her magical room, for me it's a magical room, where she had hundreds and hundreds of books. But she knew the one book down there that she wanted to give me because it was about this program that I didn't know a lot about, and she had that book. And she knew where to find that book. She found that book. And it was just amazing to have that gift of her teaching me. She had to crawl up those stairs to get back to the room. Um, she was physically exhausted, but mentally rejuvenated. So she was sharing her gift of teaching, even when physically it was so completely Her actions that day, her love, her compassion, her advocacy, her friendship, remind me of a quote from Pat Covina. Sincere passion and enthusiasm, inspire others, and sweep all obstacles away. I want to share just one more visit. When I was guiding Ethelene with some breath work, inviting her to rest back, feeling the support beneath her back, becoming aware of her breath, the inhalation, the exhalation, that seamless rhythm of breathing, and as I was speaking the words and guiding her through, she was breathing. There was a time when that changed, and she began speaking. And she began guiding the breath work and the meditation, again teaching me and giving and letting me receive. And that seamless way that Evelyn would do that, of giving and taking and receiving and loving, was so beautiful. It reminds me of another quote from Robin St. John. What the heart gives away is never gone. It is kept in the heart of others. And that day as we ended, she dismissed me for a meatball sub. So, <laughs> time for a meatball sub. Um, and that was just, it was so beautiful. And finally, one last image. Um, as we do breath work, you think of the inhalation, breathing in, inspiring, receiving, the exhalation, releasing, letting go. There's a moment between the inhalation and the exhalation where there's a pause, there's a stillness, there's a silence, there's a moment of peace. Ethelene was beautifully at peace the last time I saw her the day. Beautiful, beautiful, peaceful feeling um, to be with her and just be in her presence and receive that gift of love and compassion and advocacy and teaching. And I'm so happy that she was able to do this. So I want to end with thanking Charlie, thanking the family for allowing me to share today. And to quote Voltaire, appreciation is a wonderful thing. I appreciate that. It makes what is excellent in others belong to all of us as well. So I hold that thing in my heart, thankful she chose to share her wisdom in her final days, and that many of us healthcare providers have what she gave us to pass along to our patients. Thank you.
First time I met Ethel, my wife, Maureen, and I had volunteered to serve as one of the many hosts for First Christian Church Labyrinth event. For those who are not familiar with the Labyrinth, it can be thought of as a symbolic form of pilgrimage. People walk a path as it twists and turns, eventually leading toward the episode. Typically, those walking the path are contemplative prayer. And once reaching the center, they may experience a sense of enlightenment or be spiritually moved. Without aggression. As Maureen and I entered the fellowship hall to relieve whoever was serving as the current host or hostess, well, it turned out to be Athlete, we introduced ourselves and spoke a bit about Labyrinths, the church, and people we knew. And if there was a first impression of Ethelene at that moment, it was not her wonderful smile or the way she expressed herself. Rather, it was with her very short, twiggy style haircut. Which leads to another story and one which I will not take the time to mention here today. For today we celebrate our friendship and our love for a flame. Many times our paths crossed, from labyrinths and healing to broken computers and butterflies. Lorraine and I shared a very special, if not spiritual, journey with Ethelene. For an Ethelene, one could not help but to be inspired both by her life and her struggles, her talents, and her love for creation. Great and my lives have been touched and enriched by knowing Ethelene. We will treasure the time spent over so many past Sunday lunches with her and Charlie, along with other dear friends, where spirited conversations touched on a range of topics, from current events to politics and world peace. I will be forever indebted for her healing touch and her gentle spirit. Lorraine will forever treasure the moments spent in quantum discovery. Ethelene has walked her path and now stands at the center of God's labyrinth. And one day, we will join her. Praise God 